to our mothers out here, um, I'm used to hearing my mother, sisters, and my wife, of course, complain all the time about her tailors. And they go back to the same tailor every time. I wonder, why do you go back to the same tailor that you complain about the other time? I hear my dad complain about this mechanic, but every other time the car broke down, he called the same mechanic, and he comes back complaining and blaming every other person for the issue. Have you heard the story? Or have you ever gone to the hospital to visit the government on admission as an institution? Have you ever gone to the hospital to visit road safety as an institution? Then why do we complain when governments say, cut the grasses around you and keep your environment clean? So that you don't catch typhoid, you don't have malaria, you don't have snake bite and other issues. Why do we complain about the road safety when they ask us to fasten our seat belts? Or get new tires or have a wiper in our cars? Why do we overfill our cars and have problems and get into the hospital or die or lose our loved ones? But we find absolute comfort in complaining about every other thing except complaining about our inability to solve our own problems. And so this is the circle we find ourselves. And this is the challenges we need to outgrow. And so the important question we need to ask ourselves, do we want to keep complaining about that uncle that is rich that refused to make us rich? Do you want to complain about that our classmate that did not allow us to copy during the exam and we feel that like we say the person is the fault of our academic problem? Do you want to complain about our inability to get to work early because we woke up late and we're blaming every other road user? Or do you want to complain about the insurgency that we failed to react when we needed to react about it? If the civilian JTF have not woken up to those challenges, would you have been standing today to discuss this issue? And so all of us are victims of the society because it has become a norm and very comfortable for us to complain about every situation apart from accepting the challenges that we have a responsibility to change those issues. And I share a short story with you. Several years ago as a young boy, and I grew up in a normal African society where the mothers of the house want the kids to eat as a group, a sign of unity and family union. My elder brother is slightly three to four years ahead of me. We had a few common friends, but the majority of our friends are not common friends. I have my own best friend, Bello Ahmed, and each time I go to Bello Ahmed's house, we eat his food and we finish the food. When Bello Ahmed comes to my house, I always remind that, look, we cannot eat all of my food because I share the same dish with my elder brother. And so we eat half and I leave half for my elder brother. Bello as a good friend understood my predicament, but down inside me, I wasn't a happy person. I kept complaining to my mom virtually every day. Mama, I don't like this idea. My elder brother is not always home for us to eat food at the same time. I want to eat my own. She said, shut up, go back and wait for him to come back. We'll keep his own for him. One day we came back very hungry with Bello. And I told him, today we're going to finish this food. And we ate the food to the last. Two hours later, my elder brother came home very angry, very disappointed, and was causing all kinds of problems. And when I was asked, I told her I was hungry, and I reported to my mother I need to have my food alone. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, two days later, I had my own food flags. And I was eating my own food. And so I've come to realize that we cannot keep complaining and blaming others when we can have solutions to our problems. Again, some years ago, I was traveling to Bainway State. Between Lafayette and Makodi, I dozed off. I was really sleeping. And I heard the voice of a woman talking. And then I didn't know she was praying. But I was wondering, was it in my dreams or it was in reality? And when I woke up later, I realized that the woman was praying to God to send his angel or to come and directly take charge of the steering because the driver was reckless in his driving. And when I gathered myself fully, I looked through the window and I saw the distance between the sky and the car. And I asked myself, when would the angel come and when would God come and handle this situation? And the driver was just a few meters behind me. And I told him in Hausa, as a young man, and of course we had this agreement for the benefit of my English audience. I told him very clear then that I was going to give him a, a resounding knock that one week later, the echo will be coming out of his mouth. And we had little disagreement, but at the end of the day, I got to my destination safely. I had the option of joining that woman to pray or being proactive to save my life and be here to speak today. And so as a young man, I grew up in a community where responsibilities are given to me. A part of my responsibility today is speaking to great minds like you. And I hope to have more responsibilities. Why were those responsibilities given to me? Because people think I'm not going to join the bag wagon of people complaining and blaming others, but I'm going to do the needful to change the situation for the betterment of humanity. 
And as long as we agree that that's our major focus, we're going to shift from a pathology stage of identifying problem and holding on to problem to a visionary stage. And remember, what you watered and what you give attention to grow better than what you don't give attention to. Are we going to keep giving attention to our problems or are we going to give attention to solutions? These are questions we need to ask ourselves. Young men in Nigeria gathered and complained so much about governance. You got a law that said, look, as young men, you could contest election. But young men choose to go behind elderly men and left their own young colleagues by the side and voted for older men, and today we are complaining that we are not part of a government. How can you be part of a government when you fail to form your own government and to support a young person to get into government? And so how long are we, are we going to keep complaining about a situation that is within our reach? We talk so much about disunity in this country, but virtually every institution that needs to bring unity is no longer working. Some of us are product of government college. Some of us are product of FGC. But how many of us today can send our kids to Janike to go and attend a federal government college? Now, most of the federal government colleges and government colleges have become local government and state-owned colleges. Why? Because you only have indigenous children there, and there are a few other interactions that comes into those schools. What about the NYC scheme? How is it working? How many of us are willing to go to Portaco to serve or to go to uh, Inewi to become COP members? And so virtually all institutions that need to work for the unity of the country is not working, but yet we complain about the disunity of this country. We talk about so much about peace, but how many state government have Ministry of Peace and Stability? How many state government have budget for peace, but we have budget for security votes? Why wouldn't you be talking about insecurity because you need to spend that money to justify where the money is going to? But if you have a ministry for peace, you're going to invest so much in bringing people clusters like this to discuss peace. You're going to have women sitting as stakeholders on table. You're going to have religious leaders and traditional leaders coming to discuss about the issue of peace. But none of this existing, because it's better for us to talk about insecurity and give more money than to talk about peace. How can you be talking about insecurity and peace when you invest so much money producing new weapons every day? Are those weapons meant for peace or they are meant for war? And so if we're serious about peace, then we need to start the production of weapons. If we're serious about peace, then we need to have agencies that talk more about peace than those that talk about wars. Of recent, in Nigeria, we had a national war college. Now it has become the National Defense College. Why are we not talking about a national peace college? Where people go to learn how to live in peace. And so these challenges are not supernatural. They are man-made, they are women-made, they are human. And it's you and I seated in this hall today that can make the difference and change the situation. So, young men and ladies, as future leaders, as parents, as traditional leaders, as religious leaders, as stakeholders, we are all saddled with the responsibility of making it happen. We are saddled with the responsibility of giving quality service to our people. We have a situation where a sitting government is allocating and giving blame to our gone government. You have a situation where people within the same government are complaining and blaming each other. And amazingly, you have a government blaming its citizens about problem. So who is going to solve the problem? And how are we going to solve these problems? And I think all the bureau speakers, including the playlet that took place, have told us clearly that if we take our destiny into our hands, if we decide to go out of our comfort zone, if we decide to identify with the problems, we will be able to solve it. And so we need to be problem solvers and not people seeking for problems and waiting for that people to solve our, solu uh, I mean our problems for us. And when you, when you sit around, you find out how much the international community are invested to make life better for us. The question I ask, don't we have rich men and women in Nigeria that can invest into those areas to make life better? We choose to complain. When the international community say we are corrupt, we keep shouting we are not corrupt, but we are not working towards to show that we are not corrupt because the system is not working in that direction. And so the father in the morning will say, the mother of the house have not given him breakfast. The woman will say, you kept me all night, and I couldn't wake up early to give you breakfast. She now blames the kids that are running around to get to school. And the kids will feature blame their uncle that is rich and is not giving them money. And so I ask you this simple question. When you walk out of this hall today, and you see a young boy being beaten by a gang of boys, what will be your reaction? If you walk out of this hall, and a student told you that, look, a lecturer is harassing me, what will be your reaction? If you walk out of this hall and you find a rich man assaulting, dehumanizing, and making life miserable for a poor man, 
what will be your reaction? If we walk out of this hall today and there is no government, what will be our reaction? Are we going to have a system where there is no government so it becomes a jungle? Are you going to allow that young girl to suffer because she's not your sister or she's not part of your family or she's not from your ethnic or religious group? Are you going to allow that young boy to be killed by those kids or what will be your reaction? I'm not asking anybody to give me an answer, but I'm asking you to ask yourself this question. How have you contributed to the peace in the Northeast? How have you contributed to the peace in Medjugorje? How have you contributed to peace in the neighboring communities? When the insurgency started, some people were celebrating it because they felt they were killing other people they didn't like. Some people celebrated it because it wasn't affecting them directly. But today we are all casualties and victims of the system. Whether you're in Medjugorje, Lagos, Portacourt, Sokoto, wherever you are, you're suffering the same pain. The money we're spending in keeping the troops here is money could have gone to better the lives of Nigeria students somewhere or to put borehole or water or give basic amenity to people. And we're wasting a lot of resources we cannot account for. And there are a lot of talents and great people that were killed in this crisis that could have become future leaders or better president and, and better professors and better doctors for us. We wasted them and we can't have them back. Some people's lives have been distorted forever. And therefore, this afternoon, I want to emphasize again that where do we want to channel our energies to? What's our, what's our empowerment and power of imagination telling us? What's the vision that we have in mind? And I want to leave you by telling you that history has a place for each and every one of us. We're going to be judged for either being proactive or being reactionary. But I bet you that history will forgive you when you try and fail than when you refuse to try at all. And I end by saying, let's be on the side of people trying than on the side of people that are onlookers. Don't be a standby, don't sit on the fence, but be among those people that are making the vision a reality. Thank you.